<laughs> it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Yes, yes indeed, I did fuck up. And I constantly fuck up when I'm skiing and snowboarding. Ouch. A wise old gray-haired person <laughs> once told me on the mountain, son, if you ain't falling, you ain't trying. It ain't a powder day if you ain't ejecting. And those are words I live by. I fall all the time, not by choice. Falling kind of sucks, but if you're not falling, you're not progressing in skiing, selling the farm, wiping out, having a yard sale is nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's something to stand up, laugh about, get back up on the horse and keep on riding. So today I'm gonna run you through the top wipeouts of mine that I caught on camera last season and commentate them and just talk you through them what i was thinking what i was feeling and what happened um because it's just kind of funny <laughs> to look back at them i was watching a lot of old ski videos and i was like this is kind of funny some of these wipeouts are pretty funny so uh without further ado let's watch me fall into snow premature ejaculation <gasps> sorry premature ejaculation is what we're gonna call this one. And this is a funny one. When I was filming Black Holmes' steepest runs last season, this was the first run when I noticed, hmm, maybe my ski has some sort of pre-release problem, but I skied the curl at Whistler. I ripped down it, and when I got to the bottom, my ski popped off. I didn't fall. It wasn't much of a wipeout. <laughs> well, good thing that happened after I got down. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it should have been a sign from the heavens telling me, hey James, your binding is not working. Uh, maybe you should get that checked out or fix it or get something new before you ski steeper stuff. So let this be a lesson to you if you're seeing constant gear failures. Um, fix it, don't pull a James and don't keep riding on it and riding crazier things until uh, you actually get in a sketchy situation. I have a very close relationship with trees when I'm skiing and snowboarding. And if you watch my videos, you know I've kissed a tree or two in my time. This one, we're calling it Just Buy New Skis Already. I'm skiing, I'm ripping down gun barrels on the Harmony chair on the Whistler side. And uh, my ski, once again, just pre-releases and I go absolutely flinging into a tree. Well, that was nasty. <laughs> I might have to retire that ski. Where's my other one? Well, that's bad, ain't it? Oh man, beauty. Thanks, bro. Nothing fires me up like a good double eject. This should have been another sign from the heavens telling me stop using that ski, but no. So I just kept going, 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 not fixing my gear and acting like some sort of mindless Neanderthal. Uh, I ended up in a very sketchy situation on top of Molly's reach on Black Home. We're calling this one the pre-release nightmare. I dropped in, my ski immediately popped off. Um, I was lucky to lift my ski over and get my body sliding down the right part of the couloir. Well, that was, that was the worst case scenario. I fell the same direction my ski did. I would have been plummeting down the cliff and uh, would have probably been airlifted off the mountain. So let this be a lesson to you if your gear is malfunctioning and, and skis should pop off, don't get me wrong, but You're they okay? should not pre-release like down. this. Um, your din setting should be set. So when you need to lay down an edge, a safety edge, you know, turning hard, stopping, whatever it is for whatever skill level you're at, you do not want your ski popping off unnecessarily. Next we have the tree slap. This is a reminder to anyone who doesn't wear goggles or helmet in the trees. Uh, I constantly get hit in the head. This time was way harder than normal, but uh, yeah, goggles are important so you can protect your eyes when the trees are whopping you in the face. Believe it or not, some people tell me that I talk too much. Don't know if I believe them. Anyways, this one we're calling the shut up and ski, goddammit. Sometimes when I'm skiing, I'm so stoked, I'm screaming, I'm talking, I'm staring at things. I'm not actually focused and dialed in because I'm so goddamn thrilled. I'm so stoked and uh, I can lead to problems. So it's a reminder there to stay half focused on the hill if you, if you can it's hard for a guy like me but if you can stay half focused on the hill you might reduce spills like this <laughs> <laughs> 
Behind in the snow every day, folks. How it's done. That's how we do. <laughs> this is that 86 centimeters I was talking about before. Let me go. Oh. Well, that's my first ejection of the year. Superman right out of the bushes. Didn't know that stick was there. What a goof. Well, at least I know my skis are leaked. That's always good. The K2 Butt Bender. The name sounds funny, but let me explain. I tested a pair of K2 Mind Benders last year. I didn't really love them. At the end of the day, things got kind of out of control in the trees. I was getting tired and I just kind of flopped up and I bashed my ass on like a hard, icy mogul type thing. And man, did it hurt. One of the most painful contacts I made on the mountain. I remember standing up and saying like, that's it, I'm done. Get me off these skis. They're hard, they're awesome. They're useless in the trees. Ooh. That hurt. Ooh. Get off these skis. <laughs> Snow should not enter the dark reaches of your body and that was a wild day. Karma, karma's a bitch. This one we're gonna call Karma. I'm skiing down, I'm super stoked. People look down to my left. I kind of ski down, try and follow the snow. I end up snow spraying a guy who's like just standing there. It wasn't the nicest move of me. And then I kind of go past his partner who was just down the hill. And as I pass her, I jump and I land and I double eject and I deserved every piece of snow that was in my mouth. I deserve that. <laughs> so thank you, Uller, Euler, Bueller, U L L R. I think it's Uller, the snow god. Thank you for filling my mouth with snow filled joy and karma that day. Have you ever pulled the e-brake on your parents' vehicle, the first car you ever had, doing some drifting with the boys? You know how it feels to stop abruptly. This one I'm calling parking brake because it uh, literally felt like I had the e-brake pulled on me. My one twig just got caught in a gluey section of pow snow and I just went absolutely flying. <laughs> well, I'm good. Where's my ball? First ejection of the day. It ain't a powder day if you ain't ejecting. There's my ski 20 feet away from me. Gonna keep on shredding. Abrupt stops, plus skis, plus Ooh. bindings. Usually equals a fun fall. Oh, so math. Everywhere. I'm a mathematician. If you start growing hair that looks like Einstein's, you're able to start calculating things better. You guys and gals might remember this one. This one was the most painful wipeout I had the entire year, and we're calling it Hug a Tree, or we could have called it Kiss a Tree too, um, or Kick a Tree, because that's kind of more what happened. But I was minding my own business, skiing through a beautiful powder-filled forest, and next thing you know, I was wrapped around a tree. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. really dumb i'm okay ran straight into this tree here so my bindings popped out i hope it's not broken um extremely painful my legs were bashed up if i didn't hit my boot i'm sure i would have shattered like my knee or anything that i hit so i'm thankful i hit my boot i got bruised right through the boot and my leg was sore for like three weeks it was a dicey one you know if the goggles fall off your helmet and around your neck you had a bit of a, a bit of a situation how are we feeling Oh, well that was a big smash, boys. But you gotta get back on the saddle. <laughs> you gotta get back on the saddle. You get him off this thing. You! <laughs> Backcountry skiing, super fun. 
Hiking on skins, if you've ever done it, it's not really the easiest thing. I'm not great at it. I'm still getting more into backcountry skiing. I looked like a split boarder here their first time on skis. I was just coming down a downhill patch while hiking up and uh, I ate a fistful of snow. I'm hopping and popping. I'm like a big bad wolf. Except much sweatier. He was hairier. Wow. Just a playground, people. Go big or go home, baby. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I deserve that, don't I? Where's the camera rolling? Oh, it's rolling, but it's probably in the snow. <laughs> if I wasn't wet already, there's a, there's a face plant. Next, we have the Great Wall of Pow. Uh, you know you have a problem if you're just skiing down normally and you hit such a deep patch of powder that, uh, that you double eject. This one was pretty scary because I was skiing by myself and I flipped upside down. Um, kind of a reminder to me in a wake-up call like I should be skiing with people more often. So make sure you're always skiing with a buddy in the, in the pow because it uh, can be pretty sketchy. This next one, it's not me, it's a homie Noah I met on the hill and he puts Olympic gymnasts to shame with his uh, his cartwheels down the mountain. We're calling this one the Ragdoll Time Traveler. Yeah, boys! Woo! Oh! Yeah. I believe I can fly. dimension buddy your skis are in another dimension Woo! this one wasn't too painful but it was more on the stupid side and sometimes when i'm skiing i don't see trees and i have to ask the question who put that there Damn it. Idiotic. Idiotic. My vents are open. I'm filled with snow. Haven't had an ejection in a while. It's good. Keeps you young. You know, this one I'm having a good day. I'm ripping ABD. Always be dropping. Uh, ABD. ABD. Anyways, ripping around, having a good time, and... Sometimes the worst falls are the most awkward falls, and even though this looks like absolutely nothing, this was one of the sketchier falls in terms of injuring myself that I had all year. I'm gonna call it the meniscus mangler because I came close to tearing every part of my knee by getting my tip caught in the snow and kind of spinning in a small circle. It was pretty sketched out. Oh, fuck me. That could've been really bad. Is my knee all right? My ski just got caught in the heavy snow. Jeez, that's how you freaking tear a knee right there. I think I'm all good. Jeez, my body's taking a beating today. Almost mangled up my meniscus. We'll finish just with a back slap. I just back slapped so hard. Oh, fuck. It was completely flat. I went off one of those big rocks in black home on like a flat light day and didn't even know that I went off it and uh, literally slapped my back so hard that it was like my back hit my bindings and I was like fully laid out, but like hit it the ground so hard as I just bounced right back up. It was fun. Well, that's it. That's all I caught on camera. I fell a hell of a lot more than that, but I'm not always filming and, uh, and falling happens all the time. Let me know in the comments about the craziest wipeout you had last year. Fingers crossed you didn't get injured. And if you did, hopefully you recovered and good to go for this year. Wipeouts happen. It's the nature of the game we play and the risks that we take when we're on the hill. It's all for the love of the game. Don't be afraid to progress and push yourself within a reasonable amount. You know, um, if you're just skiing blue runs, don't go jump off Air Jordan. The way I like to think about ski progression is like turning up a volume dial. There's a hundred dials on the volume. So like 
if you're at a if you're at a 15, you know, turn the volume dial to an 18, but don't turn it to like a 40. You know what I mean? If you're skiing greens, don't hop on a double black. It's pretty straightforward how you should progress. And if you've just turned it up just a little bit, you're challenging yourself a little bit with speed, you know, you feel maybe a little bit of butterflies in your stomach, kind of excitement, adrenaline, but you're not out of control. It's a good amount of progression. So falls are gonna happen within that range when you're challenging yourself a little bit more. Um, if you're challenging yourself way too much, you're putting yourself in a dangerous situation. But regardless, people of all skill levels are gonna fall. I fall all the time. I honestly probably fall once each and every powder day because I'm going so hard and I'm so excited. I'm not telling you to get out there and go and try and fall, but don't be afraid to fall because accidents happen. And the great thing about snow is it's fairly forgiving if you're not above a cliff or somewhere super exposed. So make smart decisions. You might have noticed I'm wearing some Rise and Alpine threads. Um, if you want to support me, links in the description. That's it. That's all. Until next time, let's watch the snow forecast and, uh, and wax those skis up because winter is coming.